Battlefield. Gran Turismo has seen a release on every single PlayStation format barring the PS Vita, with GT Sport hitting PS4 recently at the time of writing, reading, speaking, whatever time this is. Almost every PlayStation has a GT in its top two best-selling games of all time, and the only two that don't are the Vita, which never had a GT, and the PS4, which at the time of making this, has GT Sport with sales figures I do not know. Still, it's safe to say this is an unpopular and terrible series. Nah, no, I'm just kidding, it's great. And now, here's 20 things you may not know about Gran Turismo, and if you do, maybe you just want to hear them again. Who knows? Number one, those sales figures. Might as well start by filling you in on what I was bleating on about a second ago. The original Gran Turismo is the highest selling PS1 game of all time, with 10.85 million copies shifted. Gran Turismo 3 is the PS2's second top selling game ever, with 14.89 million copies shunted. And Gran Turismo 5 made it to second place in the PS3's highest sales for games, with 11.94 million copies shunted. The PSP's Gran Turismo, meanwhile, sold 4.66 million copies and was the underrated handheld second place seller. Not what you would call a bad run for the series. Bonus fact. On average, including the prologue spin-offs, Gran Turismo sells 6.4 million per game. That's more than the averages per game for the Zelda series, 4.14 million per game, the Uncharted series, 5.24 million per game, the Halo series, 5 million per game, Assassin's Creed, 5.55 million per game, and almost as much as the Need for Speed series, which averages at 6.81 million sales per game. All of these figures come from before the last release for each game mentioned, because getting up-to-date sales figures is like pulling teeth from a rock. Still, it's no wonder Sony put so much stock into the bloody thing. Number two, not a one-game studio. Polyphony Digital is known as the Gran Turismo studio, likely because it's made about 32,000 different versions of V-Rally, uh, Gran Turismo, whatever it's called. But it is not a one-game studio, with a whopping four, count them, other games flooding like a literal flood from its doors. Motor Toon Grand Prix and its sequel, Omega Boost, and Tourist Trophy. Yes, three of them are racing games, but hey, a giant robot thing. That's branching out if ever I've seen it. Bonus fact. For all the resolution fans out there, Tourist Trophy shares the distinction of being one of only four titles for the PS2 capable of 1080i output. The others are Gran Turismo 4, Valkyrie Profile 2, and, um, Jackass the Game. Number three, the prototype, sort of. The earliest version of Gran Turismo is said to have been in the works for the Nintendo PlayStation, but I couldn't corroborate anything about that, so we'll just ignore that and leave it as a statement uttered by a buffoon. However, those playing Motor Toon Grand Prix 2 were privy to Polyphony's ambitions for the racing genre, at least if they completed the game on Expert. Those doing so were rewarded with the goodie of Motor Toon Grand Prix R, a mode of the game that replaced the bouncy Mario Kart-like races with realistic vehicles and realistic physics. Naturally, I wasn't good enough to complete the game on Expert, even though I have it. No bonus fact. Number 4. Boys Club. Kazunori Yamauchi revealed at Gran Turismo 4's launch party back in 2004 that he and his team were working on a new entry to the series, Gran Turismo for Boys. Aimed squarely at children, well, male children apparently, Yamauchi intended the project to create car lovers from a young age, stating, If we don't grow to love cars and youth, we become adults who are uninterested in cars. And apparently girls and women can't be interested in cars, or something. Anyway, it never came out and instead morphed into Gran Turismo on PSP, sort of. Girls were allowed to play it as far as I'm aware. Bonus fact. Gran Turismo received the Golden Marker Special Award at the Japan Car Design Awards in 2016, and I quote, for being an instrument about learning how to drive a car for those who are below the legal driving age and for learning about cars in general, and for giving opportunities to car designers around the world while broadening the vision of the market. So it seems Yamauchi didn't even need his sexist Gran Turismo spin-off. Huzzah! Number 5. D-O-double-G. For Gran Turismo 3, Snoop Dogg penned the track Dogs Turismo 3 for the game. It is, as you would expect, utterly superb in all the wrong ways. And I quote, It's all about winning y'all know what's up, PlayStation 2 taking you to a whole new dimension where the cars look fly and they got good suspension. I take the lead while the others crash the wall, Doggy D-O-double-G in the motherfucking Gran Turismo 3. The coolest game doing things, I'm picking up speed while I'm switching lanes. If I lose, I'm gonna turn it off and get right back. Choose a whole nother car, a whole new course, with tunnels and trees. 
Sure, Feeders Just a Day may have become popular thanks to GT3, though it also may not have, but it's all about Dogs Turismo 3, gaming's greatest song. No bonus fact. Number 6. Price Mobile. The single most expensive real vehicle ever featured in the Gran Turismo series is... The Honda Accord! Wait, no, the Moon Buggy. Yes, Lunar Roving Vehicle LRV001 from Gran Turismo 6 cost $38 million to build back in the early 70s. Adjust that for inflation, because that's what you should do, and you get a fairly princely sum of $228,750,000. Stick that up your Bugatti. No bonus fact. Number 7. Accu Racy. <laughs> The number of polygons in a car in the original Gran Turismo was 500. By the time Gran Turismo 6 released in 2013, that number had increased to one people still pretended to care about. For the original Gran Turismo, one car was one day's work for one person. For GT3, one car was one person's work for 30 days. When GT5 rolled about, one car was one person's work for 180 days, or six months if you want to be informal. Gran Turismo Sport also took the devs six months per car, but while GT6 featured 1,197 cars at launch, GT Sport has 162, so a lot more work has gone into each vehicle. That man who done Gran Turismo, Kazuno Yamauchi, said, We are building for future versions of the console, not the one we see today. So, like, we'll be seeing these models reused in the PlayStation 9, I guess. Bonus fact! Gran Turismo 6 featured accurately positioned stars in the night sky, for some reason. I have no idea if GT Sport keeps up the tradition. Number 8. Name Recognition Gran Turismo has model car kits, concept cars, a lot of which can't actually be built yet because technology isn't good enough, a cafe and even a street in Australia named after it. That's Gran Turismo Drive in Bathurst. At the Mount Panorama motor racing circuits are not exactly an unexpected naming there. Meanwhile, Kazunori Yamauchi doesn't have cars and concepts and cafes named after him right now, so he just has to settle for a street of his own in the town of Ronda, Spain. Look out for Paseo de Kazunori Yamauchi if you're ever around there. Bonus fact. Speaking of name recognition, you can spot a mention of Konami on the 1990s version of Fuji Speedway on Gran Turismo 4. Obviously it has to be in the past because the only mention of Konami you get these days is a sentence starting with the company name and ending with is a bit of a shitter these days in it. Number 9. This game ain't for you. The GT series often gets a bit of stick, especially from the non-believers and those who pretend Forza is a better franchise, for being a little bit, shall we say, nerdy. There's a real air about the games that they're almost embarrassed to be video games and instead should just be left alone as car porn for those obsessed with gaskets. Well, there's a bit of truth to that. See, Yamauchi himself has said he never intended Gran Turismo to enjoy mass appeal, with the first game intended initially only for petrol heads or diesel arses or whatever they're called. It wasn't until Taku Imasaki, now longtime producer on the series, then just producer on the first game as none of the others existed, got his hands on GT that things changed. Sensing the ever belittled US audience wouldn't get on with the game as it stood, he was instrumental in the decisions to up the speed of the game by some 25% and altering the in-game gravity so you would get cars leaping higher and further than they should. He also had a big hand in introducing arcade mode to the game as he figured Americans wouldn't be into the role-playing ladder climb of Gran Turismo's core mode. I mean, he was wrong, but it's pretty funny just how patronising it is. And now? Well now we have GT Academy in which people who are really good at the game have a chance to become an actual real racing driver. People who probably didn't think they were that into cars, at least not as much as Yamauchi expected players of his game to be, are now professionals. Fun times. Bonus fact. Gran Turismo 2 could only be completed to 98.2% in its US release as drag racing was removed. The European release, meanwhile, could be completed to 100.9% thanks to the addition of Vauxhall and Opel manufacturer racers, which were absent in any other version. GT4 had a similar issue, meanwhile, with the US and Chinese releases sometimes only allowing 99.8% completion. Number 10. Word of mouth. Never underestimate the power of telling people about stuff. On a totally unrelated note, don't forget to share this video and tell all your friends about the healing power of Bransfield. 
Anyway, Gran Turismo has been cited by some Japanese car manufacturers as a reason for increased popularity in certain models they produce, with the likes of Nissan, Subaru and Mitsubishi all declaring the game directly responsible for an uptick in interest. Mitsubishi chap Takashi Kiyuchi said back in 2002, There's no doubt that Gran Turismo played a huge role in our decision to launch the Lancer Evolution in the United States. The car wouldn't have attracted as much attention as it has in the US without the game. Outside of Japan, there's a similar picture. RUF, Rough, the brand known for modifying and releasing its own versions of Porsche's lineup wouldn't have been half as well known as it is were it not for the inclusion in earlier Gran Turismo titles. Those being the ones where Polyphony couldn't get the actual Porsche license because EA was doing its usual thing of just having all the licenses for everything ever. Even here in Britain, things were impacted, with the first GT game seeing TVR's sales increase sixfold after its release. I mean, correlation isn't causation and all that, but the Cerber was a lovely little car in that game, so... Bonus fact. You can actually find a model of Porsche in Gran Turismo 3, as the 911-996 GT3 was intended to be in the game until EA signed its exclusive Porsche license and the horseless carriage had to be removed. Its data is still present though, and you can unlock it with some pokery in an action replay or game shark, or if you downloaded a save, which I may or may not have done. Number 11. Controversy. Gran Turismo isn't a series that courts controversy. Much as I love it, it's barely a series that courts anything beyond mild surprise. While microtransactions in GT6 put some people off, complaints were limited, but Gran Turismo Sport nudged things into outright outrage territory by requiring players to be online whether they were playing the game in multiplayer or not. What you might not have picked up on is the why behind all of this. Now. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to be an apologist for Always Online, as I'm not big on multiplayer anyway and I don't just listen to what's said and automatically go, oh right, that's a good reason, god I love these faceless company decisions, but I do pay attention to reasons when they're actually interesting. Gran Turismo Sport requires you to be Always Online because of the motorsport governing body, the FIA. GT Sport includes FIA endorsed online championships, you see, so the game itself has to actually follow very strict rules and regulations for it to be taken seriously by the governing body. And I quote, In order to ensure fair racing for all, GT Sport will require an internet connection for the majority of functionality. This connectivity requirement is to ensure that progress, car availability and driver ratings are properly maintained at all times. Basically, it's so you can't be a scamming little cheater and cheese your way up to victory offline before loading your times up into the online mode. Why this applies to modes that don't link in with the FIA competition, though, I do not know. Bonus fact. I didn't believe this one, so sourced an original copy of Gran Turismo 2 to check it out, and yeah. It's true. The GT mode disc has a scratch and sniff effect to it. If you give it a bit of a rub, it lets off a scent of, well, it's a bit like asphalt and tyres, basically. FIFA 2001 had a similar effect with a grassy disc smell. Ha, <laughs> the past. Number 12. Try before you buy. The accuracy of Gran Turismo's simulation has always been a big selling point, but it's quite clearly more than just marketing gumph. I mean, the real-world ties to racing events, racing drivers and car designs just sings that fact happily, and I'm sure BMW was overjoyed to discover it could get away with a much cheaper, easier way of letting potential 1 Series customers have a test drive, handing out a specially made Gran Turismo 4 demo disc. The BMW 1 Series Virtual Drive Disc, as it was known, allowed potential buyers to choose from two cars, the 120 DSE and the 120 and race on three tracks, including the Nerdberg, Nuremberg, Nerdburger King, whatever that famous one's called, all with a three minute time limit on each track. I sincerely doubt anyone actually bought a car based on a Gran Turismo 4 demo, please do correct me if I'm wrong there, but it was a cool little thing to happen all the same. And that, friends, is a big list of facts. I know there's plenty more, it's a 20 year old series I was bound to miss more than I could ever fit in, but wasn't that interesting? I think it was. You should agree. If you don't, that's fine, but also I've conned you into watching this for however long this video lasts. <laughs> Gran Turismo is cool because it's so nerdy. Got to love that series. Thanks for watching. Do like, share and subscribe if you want to because it's a nice thing to do and it helps me bring in money on this horrible oversaturated platform so I can slowly save up for a TVR Speed 12. I deserve that, don't I? I mean, I can't even drive so it's a little bit pointless but then you can't expect me not to- Bye! I now have a Patreon, which you can find the link to in the description. If you like my work and you've got a bit of change spare, consider chipping in. If you can't or don't want to, that's also fine. I still love you. I'd like to give a big old thanks to the following folks for their $5 or more support on Patreon. Without you, I'd be dead. Alright, oh, maybe not dead, but you get the point. 
Video Brains, or Jake Tucker, Robbie Sabo, Lola Osman, Woof, and Jake Laverd. You're all good people, except for the one who's a dog. You're a good dog. Thank you for your continued support, and I hope to never make you cry. <laughs>